All right, one, two, three, here we go. All right, we're here today with Kent Nottingham from Calvary Chapel, Tallahassee. Kent was our guest speaker today. It's uh, the summer of 2021, and Kent shared a great message from Psalm 139 about the Lord knowing us and us knowing him or something like that, right? Right, (laughs) something like that. I was listening. (laughs) Amazing platypus illustration. Uh, But I've known Kent for a long, long time. And um, I think first time we met was on a trip to Israel. It's about five of us going there. But you came to Tallahassee from Las Vegas. Correct. So tell us a little bit about that. I mean, how does a guy who was one time was working in the gaming industry yes. make his way to be a long-term faithful <clears throat> pastor in the capital city of Florida. That's a pretty amazing story. Well, well, lucky maybe, I guess. I don't know. know. (laughs) Uh, No, the interesting thing is, yes, I was in Las Vegas, and um, after I left the the gaming industry, the casino, I went on staff at the Calvary Chapel in Las Vegas, and they hired me really specifically to be the administrator of the Christian school. They had a school from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade, and so that was my main function there to administrate the Christian school, and so... Uh, that's what I did. But after about three years, I really felt that call to to leave. Yeah. And it really happened because of uh, we did a corporate fast at our church hmm. and like a three day fast, praying over some things. And so Debbie and I prayed and, 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 and fasted. And then at the end of the fast, which was on a Sunday, that next Monday was the office. And one of the gals that counts the money there uh, had a little card into my box, my mailbox, with uh, four scripture verses on there. And the scripture verse says, you know, the Holy Spirit will be with you. You are to leave. You are to go. And it's like, and I didn't, I just took it home. I, I go, this wow. is, Connie left this in my box for me. What do you think? She looked at it. She goes, we're out of here. And that, so it was almost confirmation for her without me saying anything. Jeez. So we just started praying, where are we going to go? And so we, you know, we prayed, we prayed. We actually, I thought it was Tucson and we're kind of gearing up to go to Tucson, Arizona. And then all of a sudden we heard that Raul Reese guy came out there and started a Calvary Chapel oh. there. So, okay, so they're already doing the work there. So that was off the books. Hmm. And then we begin to pray. And I have a good friend named John Michaels, who's my mentor. And uh, he graduated from Florida State University. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he was there in Las Vegas working at the Nevada Test site and on staff there at the Calvary Chapel. And he kind of put the hint of Tallahassee in. He was a nice little community. And I go, okay, I you know, thought about it for a second. And so at the pastor's conference, I go to this back wall, <laughs> and, and there's a big, giant map of the United States. and in the, back of Chuck Smith's Chuck church. Chuck Smith's church. There yeah. was a big, giant map of the United States with all these push bins where Chuck's on the radio in all these different cities and places like that. And so when John planted Tallahassee, I looked at Tallahassee, and there was three push pins right there. And I go, well, look, people really like this style of ministry, yeah. the Calvary Chapel. And I thought, this is great. We're going. We didn't know anybody. We packed up, Debbie and I, uh, two kids, one six, one three. Wow. Uh, we just come out to Tallahassee, and we go to the radio stations, and we find out that Chuck had not been on the air in a couple of those stations in two or three or four <laughs> years, and the other one, he's getting ready to pull himself oh off because he was having no support there. Mm. So that's what got us to Tallahassee, <laughs> three unupdated push pins. <laughs> Got to use anything. Yeah, he use anything. So that's that's how we ended up being in Tallahassee. That's incredible. So when you got to Tallahassee and found out the push pins were not <laughs> updated, um, how do you start? I mean, I, I have a little different story. I started in my hometown, so yeah. I kind of knew people. But yeah. you start in a totally foreign environment where you really aren't known and don't know anyone. So what's the first step? What does a guy like you do? You know, for me, I, I really embrace that. I go, you know, I'm not going to ride on Chuck Smith's right. coattail. I, I'm going to be here, you know, my own, own integrity, you know, on everything. So I really embrace that. And, uh, and I didn't want to, you know, as Paul said, you know, not, not to lay on another man's foundation. Sure. So I didn't want to go somewhere where there was already a Calvary Chapel. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to go to some place that there was nothing like that, that kind of work. So I embraced it all. And, you know, and so we were, this is, we're here, we're going to be here. God's using this. So let's just go for it. And it was, it was difficult not knowing anybody. Yeah. It's difficult when your, your oldest is starting first grade and we don't know about the school system mm-hmm. and your youngest needs daycare <laughs> and I need to work. Debbie needs to work. We're both working and, 
And so it was it was pretty rough because of oh, those yeah. kinds of things and not really knowing anybody at all. So you, so you come to town, um, there's no Chuck on the radio, <laughs> and now you've got to get a job. Right. And so you, obviously you and Debbie get some kind of employment. Correct. And where do you start the church? How does that happen? Is it a Bible study in your home? I mean, who do you invite? Is people from work? Or do you go to another church and to get fed? What do you do? Well, what we did was that we rented uh, at a, a hotel a little conference room right. at a hotel. And uh, we had a Thursday night Bible study because Chuck used to do Thursday night Bible study. So let's do Thursday night. People who go on a Wednesday or a Sunday, maybe they'll come and visit right. us on a Thursday. So we started doing a Thursday night Bible study there. And uh, after about, oh, I would say one month, we went ahead and decided, let's go ahead and start a Sunday morning. Wow. And so we started looking around and we found there was a movie theater in town that had that two churches were already meeting in that movie theater and but they still had a, a, a section that was open right so went and talked to the manager and said you know we'd like to start a church here they go okay you can do that on sunday morning got two other churches in here i go that's fine you know and they go okay <laughs> i go how much is it and they go 75 dollars a month and it's on a handshake that's and so cheap. it's pretty cheap and so i mean we got electricity we had everything there yeah all the popcorn that you can eat, you know? <laughs> but so we started there, and uh, after about two or three weeks in that hotel room, actually our money was running out, and we just really couldn't afford to do that any longer on Thursday night, so we moved Thursday night into our home, and then we had the movie theater for 75 bucks a month, and, you know, this was all affordable. We could we could do this and yeah. actually have two services going. Wow. And so Okay, so you met in the home and, and the... Um movie theater correct yes so if people didn't <clears throat> like what was going on in this theater or this theater they came down to your theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was pretty challenging because uh you know your the people would come in and you got you know you got those movie theater billboards mm -hmm. and freddy cougar was really popular so <laughs> <laughs> we had to put a sheet over freddy, freddy cougar you know cougar. so the kids wouldn't get scared or anything like that <laughs> so you know it was it was kind of challenging yes so so did you do worship? Or are you a music guy? Oh. How did that happen? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, <laughs> we did. I did music. Debbie and I both did the oh, music. Oh boy, I could play guitar. I knew a few chords, and and I knew some of the worship songs are really easy, like a three chord progression. So it was very simple, and so I, we just started. We neither one of us could sing. Oh, we were horrible, <laughs> but you know, we we tried. We practiced. We practiced, and Debbie actually took voice lessons in Tallahassee wow. to try to get better, and so. And so we just we just got up there and just started doing it. And then I put the guitar down and just opened up the Bible and start teaching in that way. And That's then funny. next week the people would come back and I'd say, <laughs> "You came back after hearing the worship? You're amazing!" You know. So you know it was always it was kind of a running joke with everybody because yeah. you know we knew we weren't any good, but they were right. they were faithful. They came. That's great. I remember when <clears> we <throat> first started, I um, had a guy helping me with worship, and then uh, his wife got mad about something and they left and. I had a woman who'd play the piano, and I would lead the worship like, you know, just simple little yeah. choruses and kind of drift out as people got a little loud. And I remember we were, had an open prayer thing, a prayer request. It was small. Everybody could raise their hand. My own mom said, let's pray for a worship <laughs> 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 That's when I knew it was pretty bad. Yeah. But th those, those early days, I mean, there, there's a lot um, – going on you know you're yeah. raising your kids you're trying to build the church yeah. it's just an enormous amount of work you look back on it and you go wow that, that's that's crazy and so now you've been there how long in Tallahassee uh we've been there next month in Ju July will be 35 years we have been there years. came in in 86 1986 July 3rd was our first Thursday night service in, in 1986 so so what do you think about this I mean <clears throat> you've been about the Calvary Chapel style of ministry, well, from the very beginning yeah. of your ministry. And I, I you know, I kind of came through the side door. I'd been involved with a couple other denominations, but came into it in 83. And one of the things that seems to me to be very significant about Calvary Chapel pastors, yourself included, is that many or most of them are church planters and they yeah. stay in that yeah. church for their lifetime of their ministry. So that, that's something you have done. And, and what do you think the pros and cons are of something like that? Uh, that's a good question, John. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think 
the pros to that is is the the struggle in starting it and it mm -hmm. finally gets going and for me to leave that after all the struggles I go God's really got to call me out of here right I mean I mean I got to have the same peace that I had to come out here and start the church I got to have that same peace if I'm going to leave the church mm -hmm. and I never had that mm -hmm. so uh, you know it's just and I go I don't know if I ever want to have that to leave because you know this was a hard work it's going now it's really great and but and so um, that was a pro the, the con of it all was is that when we started Calvary Chapel in Tallahassee we were the first contemporary church in Tallahassee yeah, and bet. so we were automatically marked as a cult <laughs> right off the bat yeah. and so you know we had the guitars the drums once we started getting worship mm -hmm. happening and dressed you know you didn't have to dress no that's kind of mainstream now it's not a big deal right but back then it was a big deal and people were not coming out because they just you know thought we were just so out there not amazing i mean we had a similar situation where we were kind of off the beaten track in the location that we're in and um we were also 83 kind of the contemporary yeah. we were known as the surfer church I said, oh that's just a bunch <laughs> of surfers down there they're not they're not really serious but um yeah now they're a, a, Cal, a calvary chapel like church is yeah. on every it's on Absolutely. every corner but i remember coming to my first calvary chapel and listening to the music and thought wow you can do this in church i'd only heard organ music and pianos and never heard guitars and drums and yeah that's same with me that's i grew up in a methodist church when i went when i went to church and you know it's just the organ piano mm -hmm. drums guitar can you do that <laughs> well, <laughs> i are doing it i know so so one of the distinctives of a calvary chapel is um obviously the expository style of teaching verse by verse chapter by chapter so uh what are you teaching right now? I mean, I'm sure you're teaching something in your church that's probably similar to that, or maybe you're taking the summer off or a topical. What, what's where are you at right now in the scripture? Uh, right now, I'm in Ephesians, and okay. you know, doing it verse by verse on Sunday morning. Uh, I still do that, but I I also branch off and do topicals mm -hmm. a lot more than I used to at the very beginning. Right, and and now I kind of just I kind of float with different books of the Bible, and I feel like God put something on me after. You know, I've been through the Bible two times, mm -hmm. and after I went through it the second time, right. I go, I'm going to do something different as I go through the Bible and do verse by verse and more topicals, more series kinds of things. And so it's been really, really good. I think the church really likes that, but they really like when we get back into the Word and really do yeah. kind of more of a pretty in-depth kind of thing on Sunday morning, which I never did that on Sunday morning like I did on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. So now I do that on Sunday morning. It's been really good. So. So we're 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 here on the beach. You're in <clears throat> Tallahassee, which is a little more inland. So when you guys do, um, I know you believe in um, baptism by immersion. Do you guys do some kind of baptismal in the church? Do you go down to the beach? What what do you guys do when people need or desire to be baptized? We we do both. We uh, we basically everything used to be at the beach. Mm -hmm. We used to go uh, to a place called St. George Island. Sure, yeah. Which is about an hour and a half, two hours from Tallahassee. But we'd go down there. We'd rent a pavilion. And, uh, you know, and then people would come out there, make it a day, and, and do the baptisms there. It's, it's always a big turnout for that because I made it like a fun Saturday sure, you know, yeah. for family. Uh, you know, and but we've also done them at the church. We've done them on stage hmm. at the church. Uh, we've done them outside the building at the church. So right, right. we're just kind of like... Yeah, whatever. whatever the Lord leads, you know, we want to do it. So you have how many children? Two boys. Two boys, and um, one of them works with you in the church. Is that correct? Correct. My oldest son, yes. And what does he? What does he do? He's the. Uh, he's more like the administrator, the executive oh, okay. pastor of the mm -hmm. church. He's not a teaching pastor, though. He can get up and teach. Yeah. Uh, you know, not on Sunday, but on other things, he'll get up and share and teach. But he doesn't really feel that call right. as much as he feels the call just be administrating, putting things together, mm -hmm. uh, you know, working with the staff, you know, and he's really, really good at that. And it takes a lot off of my plate now sure. where he can, he can, he just, he runs all of those kinds of things. So it's, been, awesome. it's been great having yeah. your son on staff. It's really yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So, so you, you, all these years in ministry, raising your two sons, uh, your wife, I mean, I know Debbie, you guys been involved in ministry together. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not been just 
just you. It's it's right. it's her right by your yep, side yep. and helping make all those decisions. Um, is, is there a part of your ministry you can think of and say, uh, this was this is the greatest part of ministry. This is the difficult <laughs> part of ministry. I mean, we all have certain things we maybe are better at or you know less better at or however you want to say it. And and we tend to gravitate toward thir- certain things in ministry, and uh, some things come easy, some things don't. Do you mean the best and the worst? Yeah, the best and the worst. Yeah, the best and the worst. Well, I, you know, the, the best, <clears throat> the best for me in ministry is that with so many years under my belt with this, you know, it's a lot easier. You know, it's a lot easier to to teach, to go through the scriptures and, and look for things. I like still studying i like going through god's word i like it to be fresh and mm-hmm. new yeah and so i i love that about that and even as i was sharing today you know I, I really do like the diversity of people many times and the different personalities so there's some that can rub you the wrong way sure. but there's still i like the difference in people sometimes and mm-hmm. i really have enjoyed that that's been kind of uh, the plus side of course the negative side is that you know, why don't people stay around? Why do people always <laughs> leave? What, you know, you, you always take it personal yeah, in some yeah. ways because, you know, oh, what did I do or not yeah, do or yeah. something like that. So that's kind of, you know, the negative part. You, you know, people have been with you for for many years and then all of a sudden after 25 years, they just leave. It's like, what happened? Well, it's a lyric in a song that we don't like. <laughs> I go, really? After 25 years, a lyric, a lyric in a song, you don't. And yeah. they and I go, I go, why? That's, that's like, that's this. The sad part to me is like, yeah. you know, uh, why, you know, so you you got to kind of get used to that. That's just the way, mm-hmm. way it works. But, you know, that's to me, that's the downside. Just, yeah. you know, sometimes people not staying committed and staying with you and, yeah. and really, you know, traveling with you and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and tracking with you. So. So, yeah, the hard part is is um, relationship disappointment sometimes. Yes. Yeah, where yeah, people you, you think, oh, yeah, they're they're here. And then all of a sudden you hear they're not here. <laughs> And uh, I would agree with you that the being able to, I mean, <clears throat> what a great privilege it is to be able to sort of be set aside in your life to study the Bible and teach it and, yeah. and see the Bible have its impact on people over the years. And we all have our um, sort of prodigal sons in our world that drift off. And, mm-hmm. uh, so how would you say... Uh, your wife has been a part of your ministry. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> I could have never done it without my wife. I can tell you that right now. I, I would have never lasted without her. <laughs> uh, she's been. She is a great help, and she is a help to me. I mean, she is like supports me a hundred percent, but also will not be afraid to say something to me, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, at all. That she doesn't uh, think maybe we need to think about or work on or something uh-huh. that needs to change maybe someplace yeah she'll be very she'll be very vocal about that and let me know that which i appreciate that sure i mean at least i know she's not at the be, time but you appreciate yeah, it. <laughs> at the time but at least i know somebody's honest with me you know right yeah will talk to me and tell me these things so uh that's I, you know she's done so much for the ministry and you know she is so well liked with so mm. many people in the church mm. she is so well liked and and she works hard Mm-hmm. And and if and if something comes up and you need somebody to jump in there, she's the first one. That's awesome. She'll jump back in there. She'll do it. She'll yeah. she'll be more than happy to do it. And so she's always that willing person, no matter what it is, to always just jump in there and take care of business for the church. So that's you know, like cool. her and I always said, well, nobody's going to love this church as much as you and I love the church. Mm, that's true. And no, and nobody's going to really be behind it as much as you and I are going to be behind it. So we just had to accept. You know, that's just the way yeah. life is. Yeah. And and for some reason you expect that though you think people will be just as invested as you are <laughs> you do just as excited as you are then you find out they're, they're not even showing up for this you not showing, yeah 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 that's true my wife and I went through that and you yeah. know I, I having probably been in the ministry the same kind of amount of time you know my wife has always been very honest as well and um, I remember one time she she said you know. I used to want to discuss all these issues before John would go off to church. And she said, I realize those are not the times, you know, <laughs> to have a fight before before service starts or something. But yeah, she's always been willing to jump in and give discernment sometimes when when I didn't see it. I think women see things, you know. Now, s- things happen in ministry, speaking of wives, mm-hmm. and difficulties come up. 
and maybe someone in the church uh, says something about Kent or you know is mad at you or something. Uh, one of the things I, I tried to do, and, and I want to hear your perspective on this, I tried to tell my wife as little as I could <laughs> about people who say things because she seemed to take it so much more personal than I did at yeah, times. Yeah, I'm, I'm exactly the same way, John. I, uh, I, I take that, that, that scripture verse literal where it says in First Peter 3, you know, husbands consider your wife as the weaker vessel, not weaker in mentally, right. you know, or intellectually or anything like that, but they, they take things a little harder than I take them. Yeah. And uh, I can let things, as a guy, let it just roll off my shoulder most of the time. But she can't do that. So I have to be very careful that I go home and she goes, so how'd the board meeting go last right, night? Right. I go, well, it went really good. Everything's great. I, I just got to, you know, yeah. if something really bad happened or somebody, you know, came up to me and said something, I don't need to communicate those kinds of things to her. And that's my way of protecting her because I know how she is. She's going to yeah. be, you know, in my corner fighting for me. Right, in, right. In, in, in like, just like Lynn would do for you too in the same yeah. way. Yeah. So here's, a, here's, here's the, a tough question. Maybe it's not that tough, but <laughs> it's it's now 2021, started in 86. In, in all those years, if you could say, you know, if there's one thing I would have done different in ministry, uh, if I could go back, so to speak, and it, not at a certain stage or date, so to speak, but if I could do a few things different, is there anything that comes to your mind wow. or heart? Well, I, I, I don't, that's, that's, how it's a, that's a tough one. It's it is a, a hard one. one. It's, it's a, a hard one. one. Uh, there's probably a lot of things I would do differently. Um, I, I don't know what they would be. I, I, I just, I, I can't really think of anything right off the top of my head. I think in how I, I, uh, I handle things, I would have done differently in certain ways. I think I've, I've not handled certain situations you know, good. I, I could have handled it a lot better. Those are kinds of things I wish I could to redo. Yeah. You know, things like that, and and and, and that's relationships too. You know, yeah, not just sure. telling those things yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly right. I go, yeah. I wish I would have said that. I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I just wouldn't. You know. So I do have mm-hmm. those even to date. <laughs> <laughs> to date. To date. You know. So it, that it's it, you know. There's just those those things that you you know. Uh, as far as everything that's kind of happened, I just think it all happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just don't want to ever look back going, you know, hey, if if I was wrong and I did wrong, yeah. God, in spite of that, you still, you're still doing a work. Mm-hmm. And uh, your, your hand's still upon me. You're still, your hand's still upon the church. And, you know, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, you know. And so yeah. it's like, I just so, yeah. And I just, I do have some things I, I definitely would have done over so definitely a better life experience than staying in the gaming industry in <laughs> Las Vegas, right? Yeah, you know, it was it, it was so easy for me. To, it, it, I got to tell you the story because when I was leaving the casino, I was I was the golden boy. Mm. I was I was the guy that that college educated, right. and Las Vegas wanted to change their view. And the house that I worked in, you know, were grooming me, mm. and they were. You know, and when I said I'm quitting and going to the ministry, I remember one of the bosses in the in the Baccarat came up to me and he got in my face and he goes, you stupid fool, he said to wow. me, because he goes, you're leaving all this. You are the guy. They're going to take you. And I remember in, in, even my, the owner took me up to his office and showed me the hotel he's getting ready to build and where he's where I'm going to you be the casino manager of it. Wow. Just moving right into just managing the whole thing. And, but my thing was this, I had no regrets because after 35 years, what do I have in that business? Nothing. Right. You know, you, you retire, somebody else takes your place. Right. Okay. You, you maybe made a little bit of money, but when you die, it goes to somebody else anyway. <laughs> but I looked at what I'm doing for the last 35 years yeah. and there's the eternal rewards yeah. that can never be taken away from me. Right. And so it was so easy for me. I, and that's what I thought about back then was that. This is eternal, what I'm doing now. This, what I'm doing here, is not eternal. Yeah. I want the eternal. So. Yeah, so the, the, the greatest thing about what you do, what we get to do, is that we get to invest in the lives of people yeah. and the difference. I mean, I noticed today after you're speaking, a lady from our church came up to you and was expressing her, 
her thanks for her daughter lived in your area and yeah. lost a child and you were able to help her and connect her with another family. I mean, you probably wouldn't have done that much in the casino. No, <laughs> no, and it was it was so refreshing today. That was 11 years ago and she came yeah. up to, to you know, tell me the story and where everybody's at right now. And it's like, gosh, you just made my day. Yeah. Why tell me that? That's yeah. so good to hear about your, your family. Yeah, those kinds of things, you know, make it all worthwhile. You'll get a, a email from somebody from long ago that tells you, you know, oh, you don't know how much you impacted my life and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And, um, yep. you know, that makes it all worthwhile. It does. I mean, you've got the ups and downs, ins and outs, and all the difficulties yep. that come with it. But in the long term, you look back and you kind of say, I don't have any regrets, really. You know, uh, I was able to do this and got to do it yeah. for yeah. a long, long time. And the Lord actually even blessed it. Yeah, God allowed us to be able to touch lives. Yeah. And, you know, and it's like, that's so great. We think about so many people out there right now that, you know, that the Lord has allowed me to touch their life that don't say anything to me right. or communicate. But, you know, they're, they're out there. Yeah. So, so great to have Kent Nottingham here with us, uh, pastor in Tallahassee since 86, uh, married, got two uh, grown children. Do you have grandchildren? I have four grandchildren. I have four grandchildren. Now, what are the ages of those? Well, I, my oldest son has a, has a boy and a girl. My youngest son has a girl and a boy. Okay. And, and so the ages go all the way from 10 to 5. Cool. So that's got to be fun for you and Deb. Uh, we love it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. So God's blessed you with a family, with grandkids, with a church. I know you're still in the process of uh, adding on to the church. Yes. Still got vision for school and yep. a lot laying ahead. So great to have Kent Nottingham from mm -hmm. Tallahassee. We've been friends for a long time. I shared yes. in church today. You actually came and uh, resided over my wife and I. Uh, renewing our vows yes. in 25 years. That was an honor. That was fun. That was an honor. Got to officiate. Officiate. Yep. You guys is uh, that was renewing fun. your vows. That was that was a big honor for me. You invited me to do that. Well, that was a lot of fun. I had um, Paul Clark came. I don't know if you remember Paul. He's a musician, and um, so it was a great time. Great having you here. Yeah. Thanks, Kent, so much for being a friend, being a faithful pastor. Need more guys like you. <laughs> well, thanks, John. It's been great to be with you guys here at Coastline. It's been wonderful to hang out and to be with the body of Christ and, of course, to see you and Lynn and, and the kids, too. It's just wonderful to see all you guys. So thank you.